15 or 20 minutes. We'll get to as many people as possible. Uh, we're back to the raise hand function as opposed to the uh, entering questions through the chat function. So raise hands uh, and we'll get this started. Bruce Beck, yours is up first. Go right ahead. Aaron, have you had a chance to think from a fan's perspective about what Yankees Dodgers are all about? Maybe a little bit. And in some ways, um, you know, you, you've always I've always had that sense being here that there's that underlying um, craving for that, you know, even going back you know, the seven, seven years now that I've been here, uh, you know, there's always been that occasional talk about Yankees Dodgers. So, um, I think it's great. Um, you know, I grew up, <laughs> uh, you know, with my dad, you know, in the seventies and eighties playing for the Phillies who won a bunch of Eastern division championships and the Dodgers sent them home and back-to-back -back championship series years. And, um, so, and obviously with the right to play the Yankees in the, in the fall classic. So, um, that's right in my wheelhouse, those teams in those days. Um, so it's definitely meaningful to me and not lost upon me. Um, but I, I look, I, I think it's going to be, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it. Um, the stars will be out. The eyeballs will be watching and uh, hopefully we can deliver on a great series. Gary Phillips, go ahead. Hey Aaron, thanks for taking the time. Uh, just to follow up on that, is there any difference in feeling for you getting to this point as a manager opposed to when you did it as a player? Um, tough to say, um, you know, it's a grind either way, you know, going through the, the playoffs and the, f first of all, the season and, and the excitement of getting to the playoffs and, and advancing round after round. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of similarities just in that, you know, you feel the weight of it, um, the excitement of it the pressure of it. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm not playing between the lines anymore. So there's that difference, but you're still competing uh, on the biggest stage at the highest level against the best. And there's something that's rewarding and why you do an element to that. Is there anything you're able to take from your playing experience, making it to the world series and the lead up to it that is applicable now as you're preparing? I don't know. I, I think, I think your experience, you know, hopefully serves you well in everything you do and just makes you more equipped and to, to deal with all that's, that's going to come with it. Um, but I don't know if there's necessarily anything I specifically take from getting to the world series 21 years ago as a player that I'm necessarily going to apply today, but but I think I'm a product of my experiences to some degree. Does it feel like it's been that long? Yeah, it feels like a long time ago. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Yep. Here, go ahead and mute. Okay. Looks like maybe you're borrowing Brendan Cuddy's um, <laughs> computer. Yeah. Reed. Oh, go ahead, Peter. You okay. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it unmuted. Thank you. Um, hi, Aaron. Um, a bit of a follow up to Bruce's question. Just what, um, I guess, what stands out to you the most about the history of this Yankees Dodgers rivalry? And what does it mean to you to now be a part of it? Um, I think Reggie hitting homers and leaning into the ball and on the base pass and the rundown and Tommy Lasorda coming out and the sound of all that and Tommy Lasorda going to the mound and take it hooking the guy um but just some legendary teams right with with Reggie and and you know Thurman Munson and uh on and on Willie Randolph and and on and on and and the Dodgers and the stability they had with the with their infield of you know Garvey Lopes say um 
you know, Dusty in the outfield and just iconic teams. Um, and East meets West. And this is, you know, Dodgers, Yankees, Lakers, Celtics, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, it has that kind of feel to it. And um, I certainly remember, you know, those times and those teams very well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anthony Reber, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, hi, Aaron. Um, on the flip side, uh, any disappointment or maybe even relief that there's no Subway series and all that goes along with that? Oh, I don't know. Not, I mean, not really. Um, you know, that would have been very exciting and plots and storylines that would have been amazing as well you know to to play here in the city you know against your crosstown rivals so there would have been neat things about that um but but going through it not really having a preference or anything like that you know i never i never get caught up in that really um you know just excited to you, you knew whatever reason whatever the national league result was um i think you can dream on a pretty awesome storyline and um, pretty awesome matchup. Um, and now it happens to be us and the Dodgers. Thank you. Ron Blum, go ahead. Hey, Aaron, thanks for doing this. As you look at the personality of this team compared to some of the others, and it seems it's as or more determined, is it a more fun group? because of some of the personalities there or does the success breed that fun? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, I, I feel like we've had a number of teams here that have been, you know, very fun for me to go through all of it with. Um, you know, I, I, I do think we're here because this is our best team, at least at this time of year. Um, that we've had and there's no denying I, I feel like culturally speaking we've had really strong situations pretty much year in and year out um i would say it's as strong as it's ever been and i think it's there's no denying and i've said this a lot and you hear them talk about it and i think those of you that cover us witness it the closeness that these guys um have with one another and that trite playing for one another is palpable with this group has been all year has been since day one um these guys love each other and these guys um love doing it for one another and i always feel like the best team situation you can get into is when you can genuinely say at the end of the year or at any point in the year that not because you desire it but because this is how you feel is I want it for the guy next to me more than myself. And that exists with this team, I think. And that's powerful. And also is the Cole Rodon Schmidt kill the order settled apparent because it's there or are you not uh, finalized it yet? We haven't finalized that. I can tell you Garrett will pitch game one. Um, and, and a, a good chance, like you just said, we'll roll it out like that. But, you know, we're, today's a voluntary day and we're just starting to kind of, you know, formulate our, our plans and things like that. So um, we'll see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brendan, go ahead. Aaron, regarding Ronald's question, uh, Ron's question, uh, you know, are you guys, uh, are you just like hesitant to commit to anything right now when it comes to rotation? Cause you don't know what's going to pop up. Or is it that, you know, pitching at Yankee Stadium or Dodger Stadium? Or is, are there factors that could come up that could change uh, the rotation from last time? I, I guess so. That's why I probably won't say anything right now, just because, you know, we're still kind of basking in the aftermath of getting in and haven't even started a preparation or things like that. So I just, I don't want to speak out of turn right now. That's all. Gotcha. And Regarding being a manager in the World Series, you haven't done this before, and I'm curious if you if you plan to reaching out uh, reach out on anyone about you know what it's like or how things change, 
or if you have done that or if you think it's going to be any different? Um, I don't necessarily have any plans to reach out to anyone specifically. Um, I, I know I've been texting, you know, through the, through the postseason and, and he's been around a little bit as Joe Torrey. Um, so we'll, I'm sure he and I will talk a little bit and, and communicate throughout the, the series. Um, but no, I don't have any plans to necessarily reach out to anyone for advice. Thank you. Joyce, go ahead. And you expect Nestor to be on the roster? Um, I think there's a good chance of it. Um, he is, he's scheduled to throw another live tomorrow. Um, so if everything goes well there, um, I would say there's a decent chance that he could be on the roster. Yes. And just from, from playing the Dodgers in June, what stood out the most from that series when you, when you remember it? Um, just some tough games. I think, I think we had an extra inning game. Um, I think clearly the buzz that, pops up every now and then that we talk about in the regular season series. Uh, certainly it had that when, when, when they were here on the weekend, um, good, tough ball games. I think we're, we, that, that might've been the series we were missing Soto, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the, the games he missed. Um, but I thought just definitely you could feel the buzz of Dodgers Yankees first time they've been here in a long time. You know, we've gone there a couple times since I've been here and and a similar kind of buzz when we've gone there in the summer. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's, you know, it's going to be, I, I think it's a great matchup. And uh, I think the the c series we had this summer with them um, felt like just competitive, heavy, tough games. And Martin, go ahead. Aaron, a, a few of your guys, especially uh, Stanton, have talked about, you know, the job isn't done until you win this next round. H how important is that mentality? I mean, obviously, everyone who gets there wants to win this World Series. But it, 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 do you feel like because of the history of, of the team and the expectations that you guys have, that getting here isn't the biggest thing? It's it's winning it? Um, I don't know. Maybe the history and the expectations all play in that. But I think it's just the competition. Like, we – we set out at the beginning of the year with the goal of being a world champion, you know, and we, we, that's on our doorstep. Now we get to, we're, we're at the last series where we get to play for that. Now um, that's the goal. That's our expectation. Um, we understand we've got a great opponent in our way that has the same goal. Um, but I, you know, we're just looking forward to the competition of it and, and hopefully getting four more wins. And uh, how did Rizzo come out of the series? No, you've had a couple of days. Good. He's here today working out. Um, yeah, he's in a similar spot. Should be good to go. Yep. Next, Andy Martino. Andy, we can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Call Cuddy, he'll help you out when we'll come back to you. Laura, go ahead. You're up next. Hey, Aaron, um, the Dodgers series had some unexpected heroes, especially Tommy Edmond where, uh, winning the MVP. Uh, you guys have had some big contributions from guys like Mark Leiter, from Jake Cousins, maybe guys who didn't get a lot of attention in the regular season. What type of charge does that put in the roster when you can get contributions like that? Uh, and what does it say about the, how complete your team is? Yeah, I, I think, look, if you're going to be a championship club, you've got to get those contributions from maybe unexpected places. And, um, you know, in both of those cases, we didn't break camp with, with either guy that you mentioned, for example. Uh, we got Jake very early in the season. Obviously, we got Mark Leiter at the at the deadline. Um, but, you, you know, you understand some of the central figures, you know, the Sotos and Judges and – and and G and Glaber that you got to have the production from, but I think to win a championship, you've got to get meaningful contributions um, from places maybe you didn't expect, and that's not just in the playoffs and in the World Series, but I think that's throughout the year as well. You know, you, you've got to have. There's going to be moments in time where, you know, a big guy's struggling or you're you're a little banged up or beat up in a certain area, and 
you know, the requirement of, of unexpected people to step up or, or that people would envision unexpected is necessary. And we've, we've had that this year, we've had a number of people, um, be very productive, um, that you wouldn't have necessarily expected. Certainly when we broke camp, uh, and headed to Houston to open the season. And do you want to try again? Any luck now? Yeah. All right. Um, I think you said, Aaron, a few minutes ago that this is the best team that you've had. Um, did you mean that strictly from a culture standpoint, like how they gel as a team, or did you mean from a baseball standpoint too? Yeah, Ross, I think from, from a baseball standpoint, just this time of year, um, I thought we were very good in 19. Um, I thought we were very good in 22, but at the end, we were beat up. You know, and we we really had some key pieces get knocked out, whether it was in the month of September, whether it was in the playoffs. So I just felt like things were coming together for us this year, maybe more so than ever down the stretch and into the playoffs. So far, that's played out for us. Um, I think when you say the togetherness and the culture, again, I think we've had a lot of seasons here where that, in my view has been very strong i'd say it's as strong as it's ever been and that's a testament to how close these guys are and how close they've they've become they've be, definitely become a family and you sense that throughout the entire season whatever we've gone through that's been palpable you blended a lot of different personalities into this particular culture in that regard not, not that uh -huh. you don't every year but do you think that guys coming from the team in, in that way, maybe not blending in as, as well elsewhere in some cases. Did that help the group in some way? Did it give it a personality that it that was fresh? Maybe, maybe, yeah. And I think the strength of our room, um, you know, has allowed different people to come in here. And, you know, I, I think, you know, our leadership and, you know, our captain um, does a great job of fostering an environment where whether you're coming up from the minor leagues or whether you're coming over from another organization in a trade or a waiver claim or whatever it may be, I think guys feel like they can be themselves and, and feel part of the team and comfortable in short order. And that's testament to guys like judge and Stanton and Riz and Garrett who um, foster an outstanding environment here. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Go to John Schwartz. Hey, Aaron, on a Saturday night, you called uh, Soto's at bat and at bat for the ages. I think Yankees fans have been watching and rewatching and studying it nonstop since then. Have you found yourself watching that whole sequence and kind of looking over it and whether finding new things or just marveling at the same things over and over again? Yeah, I mean, I've probably watched the at bat now in in full probably at least a few times. Um, and it it it. It is. I stand by that. That's that's an at bat for the ages, right there. I mean, um, you know, a couple of uncomfortable looking swings in there where he just kind of spoiled and stayed alive, kind of fights himself back, and finally gets a pitch and and does what Juan does with it. Um, you know, it, we've seen that so many times. You know, this one happened to be um, to send us to the World Series but I feel like there's been so many at bats like that this year, like big spot game on the line, got a pitch to him. And it's like, man, he just puts, he throws a, one of those Juan Soto epic at bats on you. And um, not surprising in that moment um, that he did it again. And uh, he's just obviously an amazing hitter. He, that, that at bat had so many different it, it had the menacing qualities of, of Juan and then I yeah. mean if you look at the celebration the joyful parts of it just I know we talk so much about him as a baseball player the person that you're around and all the different la layers to him like how much have you enjoyed that part over this I've year I've loved it he's he's one thing start with his his love of the game like you, you just get that from him right away you can tell he loves baseball and he loves everything that goes into that the preparation for it um, you know, the intelligence he has as a hitter, um, uh, his, his care about the entire game, but also his like 
his ability to come over here as a big star with obviously a lot of fanfare and a lot of expectation and, you know, in his free agent year and where all that, um, he's really just integrated into the clubhouse in short order, you know, really starting in spring training so well. And he's just, I hate, I hate to put it this way sometimes. And I've said this over the years about certain guys, but for being Juan Soto and this huge, like he's low maintenance, you know, like I don't have to like, he's, he's easy to be around. He's a good guy. You can coach him, you know, like there's been many times this year in a game or whatever, where I've said something to him like, Hey, can't, you know, and he, he's not, you know, he takes it and applies it and understands and, you know, cares about, all the all of the things you need to to be a winning player, not just being a great hitter. Like he cares about his defense. He cares about running the bases. He cares about being a good teammate and sharing information. And um and I think he also respects how hard the game is and the grind of the game too. Um he's been awesome. He really has. Um I've loved every second of him being here and uh you know Hopefully here he's here a long time. I'll take a last one from Chris. Uh, and before we do, uh, we'll uh, as we finalize details for the next couple of days, uh, we'll we'll provide information obviously to you all who are trying to plan um, the next twenty four or forty eight hours. So uh, by end of day, or at least by the time we leave here at some point today or tonight, uh, we'll provide further details in the next couple of days. Chris, go ahead. Hey, Aaron. Um, you mentioned before the uh, closeness of this team. The other day, Clark uh, Schmidt said that he felt that this was the closest locker room that he's been a part of since being with the Yankees. Uh, Glaber the other day mentioned that um, they had a conversation where like egos had to be put aside coming into the postseason. Do you feel like just coming off of the disappointment of last year, fueled the togetherness of this locker room this season? I think it's a factor, no question. Um again, and I I do feel like we've we've had a closeness throughout the years, even last year. Um but to say it's at another level this year, I think is absolutely true. And I think I think on the heels of last year, like that's part of it. That's part of it. Uh I don't know how much of the of it but it's definitely part of it because i think especially the guys that have been here the leadership that have been here um took all that very personally and knew that you know we you know we had to have a great season this year and um i think there was a maybe on just on the on the on the margins, just a tighter focus, even in the winter, like in the preparation, you know, we saw guys down in Tampa in the month of January, a lot of them working out together. And, you know, with Aaron being down there and kind of fostering that environment, like guys over at Himes all month of January and into February before spring training, not only working out and getting prepared for spring training, but I think fostering those relationships and and even some of the new guys coming in coming to the team like fostering that togetherness and that that team bond um i think it started last winter carried into before spring training and into spring training and beyond and um and i think on the heels of last year at least was an element of that not all of it but an element Okay, Aaron, appreciate you doing this. Uh, everybody enjoy the rest of the day, and we will uh, certainly be in touch.